Welcome everyone, it's RP Jimmy here with Bill again, and we're playing some more WrestleQuest. And Bill, good news, I off recording got through this mountain or whatever. So that means we can move on, even though my guys are a little worse for wear, as they would say. In fact, yeah. let me just give them some clear tape real quick, just in case. I mean, that wasn't, wasn't that much, to be honest, but okay. Um, so I also want to talk in this episode about Tough Enough, because I finally finished. Ooh, we're going to Camp Diet. Oh, did, good. <laughs> did we know that? <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, what do you think is in Camp Diet? Uh, a lot of foods that are, like, less fatty and... Like broccoli and carrots Yeah, and... a lot of fruits and vegetables. All right, let's find out. Camp Diet, here we go. Okay, so uh, here we go. LF font, and that's me, I believe. Yeah. Right? All right. Yeah. Brink, Stang. You've made it! This is General M. She's taking over the MWL garrison here. I thought you said the ML or MWL was disbanding and ceasing operations. By the way, am I assuming here it's going to be the Military Wrestling League? <laughs> yeah, I think so. They are, but they're leaving a small force gear just to maintain the area. Small doesn't even begin to describe it. We might have to hire on some mercenaries just to preserve things around here. Speaking of soldiers, I've got a surprise for you guys. Sergeant Slaughter is here. <laughs> I can't say it with a straight face. No way. Uh, am I Stag? I always forget if I'm Stag. Yeah, I think you okay. are. All right. That man. Oh, yeah, you're right. That man has the constitution of a vending machine. What? What, what the does hell? that even mean? <laughs> okay, Stag. The constitution of a vending machine. What is that even? Oh, uh, so what? What? Row one is um, amendment one or whatever. I don't know. Come on, Brink. Let's go find him. Sergeant Slaughter. This real. Okay, bye. I guess you didn't give me <laughs> enough time to read it. It's so bad they don't even want you to read. You know what, we actually feel, I feel like both of us are, meaning my team, is pretty fit, so I don't know if, I don't know how this is going to go. Now, to be fair. Yes. I did meet, oh, hold on. I got here late for the MWL send-off, and now I can't leave. Why? Why can't you leave? What? Maybe stranded on the island. Oh, here we go. More. Okay. <laughs> Big Daddy Squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I guess I'll be the Big Daddy Squeeze as okay. I do my Nash, I guess. Uh, let's see. Watch where you're going, fish. Forgive me, I... What are you doing here on Try Land anyway? Shouldn't you be in a dirty pond somewhere? Huh. Shouldn't you be in a slime bucket somewhere? Since you seem to be such a mouth breather, this... Graciado? Disgrace? Well, I don't know what that means, but you're about to get my straw through your face. Oh, oh. you're break. This is your choice. Okay. Let's be cool at you two. This looks like an honest mistake. No need to get heated. Easy, guys. Save it for the ring. Uh, I would say the first one. Cool it, you two? Yeah, cool it, you two. Okay. If I was the enthusiast, it's correct. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bump into you. Whatever. Just stay out of my way. Hey, I know you. You're Lochador, right? The flying fish himself? Man, the benthic terror right here in the flesh or fins. I used to watch all your matches back at your PAW days. 
Which promotion are you with now? I'm with Luchador Championship Wrestling now, out of San Sebastian del Encordado. Are you here for the NWL farewell celebrations? Do we know about the NWL farewell? Like, what are we farewelling? I don't know. You got it. I was on my way to see Soldier of Florida when that juice box built like an ice box got in my way. Care to join me? Are we getting a new friend? Is this going to be a permanent voice from you now? Yep. <laughs> So one thing I want to talk about during this episode at some point is uh, I finished Tough Enough. Right. And I think I mentioned the past two episodes that I've been uh, binging that. Mm-hmm. I say, like, dang, helicopter is junk. These jeeps are junk. Man, what I wouldn't give for some new gear around here. Which reminds me, I think I got new gear on the way here. <laughs> Perfect timing to mention. <laughs> Let's see now, I'm just ch- anyway, uh, yeah, like I got, look, I got an MWL replica belt. Mm. Oh, actually, it's better for him. All right, there we go. We got, is that it? Well, I, I got a, oh, I got a pyro certificate as well, by the oh, way. Oh, wow. That's <laughs> Why do I have so many elbow pads? You can never have too many elbow pads. Yes. Oh, I have my MWL army hat, which is a shame because apparently they're bidding farewell. I know. Fucking okay, helmet. Doesn't help anything. This kind of looks like the final episode of Nitro. Oh, <laughs> wow. Where were they again? In Florida, right? Panama? Yeah, City? they were at a beach. So, oh, you missed it. There was, a, there was a treasure chest down there. Where? Go to the right. Oh, good call. I got razor right. enhancements. Okay, so anyway, you finished up tough enough. Finished up tough enough. The last season was by far the worst season. Well, okay, actually, you know what? It depends if you count Million Dollar Tough enough, because on Peacock, it's only one episode. Uh, is it true that you once took out a tank with a well-placed slaughter cannon? Zelina Best is, what's the best way out of the Cobra Clutch? Do you want to be slaughter? Uh, okay. I'll do it. All right. Quiet down, you maggots. That's better. Troops, I'm honored by all the attention and praise, but I'm not here for me. I'm here for the Military Wrestling League. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. He said it's going away, apparently. Yeah, yeah. I just wish I had something to make the send-off extra special. You mean like a speech? No, you puke. Of course I have a speech prepared. I meant something like my itty bitty ditty bag. I'm sorry, your what? <laughs> my itty bitty ditty bag. Uh, Bill, can you tell me what match he used the itty ditty itty bitty ditty bag in? Uh, I think he had that in the AWA. <laughs> okay. Bird approved Bird. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. I sent some enemies home in it, but it went AWOL over at Red Dice Hill during one of my last campaigns. But that's all in the past. And the past is one thing you can't fight, troops. All right, that's enough, troops. You are dismissed. Carry on. And that's an order. Good job. Thank you. You were I really... eventually, eventually, I will get into my Sergeant Slaughter story. So, I... uh, did, did you hear that? Sergeant Slaughter's itty bitty ditty bag is real. You know what? You could have fooled me, Stag. Uh, and it's here. <laughs> it's near here. Yeah, in an active military zone, according to the briefing materials from Mister Font, Red Dice Hill is still a hot spot for the soldiers there. The war never ended. There were briefing materials. Either way, it's too risky. There's no way of knowing the bag is actually there. Besides, we just got into PAW. We want to jeopardize missing our first match by going on some foolish wrestling crusade. Isn't that what we're doing? <laughs> uh, pretty much. Hey, pretty much. where are you going, Luchador? Luch- uh, where are you going, Luchador? 
A foolish wrestling crusade! Okay. Calm down, Loach. <laughs> Alright, let me find a healing spot. That's one of the things I want to do. Alright, why don't you tell us our sergeant's, your sergeant's order story while I look for a healing spot? Okay. So, um, Sergeant Slaughter was at a minor league baseball game in Maryland, and it was on flag day. So, I was like, okay, this is kind of cool. I kind of want to meet Sergeant Slaughter, get his autograph. So, I got in line during the game, and there was a group from, you know, one of those homes for mm. people with disabilities. Yeah. And then they were, you know, they were nice people. And they were like, I wonder if he'll let us take his hat home with it with us. Which I don't think he did, because you know it's a hat. But I in the picture, after I got the autograph, he put me in the Cobra clutch. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's a really cool guy. And there was still a line going after the game ended. So he was there like after the game. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, that is cool. This is my third tour at Camp Diet, and I'm starting to get used to the food. By the way, we were wrong. There's no no broccoli here, no, um, I don't know, carrots. All right. It's this guy again. Uh, yeah, I'm so, back to Tough Enough. Mm-hmm. I, the reason I didn't like the last season was I hated the format. Now, for those that don't remember or have never seen it, the format... It's, there's three judges, which right there you're like, all right, that's normal, but yeah. not really, though, because in the end, the fans are the ones that decided it. Mm -hmm. Like, the whole thing. The, the judges just put the bottom three. Um, yeah, and then, and then they had the option to save anyone if they wanted to. Which I was like, very American Idolish, okay. And, and Daniel Bryan never used it. Are you sure? I, I thought he did. No, I don't the think end. he ever did. No, I don't think he did. Okay, all right. I'm gonna, I'll trust you on that one. Uh, so yeah, the, I will say this though. What's this? Hey. Things just got like real dark. I know, right? Did I hit anything? Uh, ouch. What the heck? That just lowered my health to half. What the heck? You know what? I'm not even gonna touch that. Get out of here. I'm out of here. <laughs> that sucked. And also, I didn't realize my my health had gone to full at some point. Otherwise, I wouldn't no, have you, looked anywhere. I was looking for. No, something. you had the tape. Remember you? No, but I that's I used one tape and that was healing fifty. Right. Oh well, whatever. Okay, let's go to the okay. function door. I'll talk more about. I don't know the understand. For wrestling relics like Sarge's bag are important to myself and my home. There are some from my home that have felt the dishonor and disgrace of losing their masks to thieves or worse. Recovering this wrestling artifact would be a salve for that sting. Sting? <laughs> Come know, on, right? we can't let let him go alone. We can't let him go alone. Oh, this is you. You think I don't want to see Sergeant Slaughter's itty bitty ditty bag? Of course I do, but other duty is here right now. If the fish wants to fry himself, it's no. Con Ooh. This is a tough one. Um. I, I don't think Brink is a kind of a jerk, so I think I'm going to go with you think I don't want to see Sergeant Slaughter's itty bitty ditty bag. You got it. Okay, but Sarge did say it would be the perfect thing for a proper send-off. Just imagine how good Paul would look if we recovered it for him. Okay, but we need to catch up to that high-flying fish. Unlike Bill Goldberg. <laughs> huh, that's the spirit. I had to get Which one. Bill Goldberg does not have. <laughs> Itty bitty ditty retrieval. So yeah, going back to Tough Enough, uh, I do think that go to Red Dice Hill in the East, the site of an action figure battle that is still raging. 
It's, it's like... Oh, I was gonna give a, a, a reference. It's like... The Great... The Keyblade War. There you go. <laughs> it's, that's it. Now I'm just gonna be Zane with the entire rest of this game. Oh, look, we've got a new thing that's right over here. And in darkness and light, the battle did commence. Nice. <laughs> I, We're eventually going to get into tough enough, folks. Yeah. So stay tuned. <laughs> hey, Lochidor. Shh. Get down. Also, get down. What? Why? What the heck was that? Sniper round. Fired from a high velocity spring power dart rifle, if I'm not mistaken. You guys were right about this still being a hot zone. But why are you guys here? Same reason you are. Perhaps we should all work together. It might increase our survival rate, eh? Count me in. It'd be an honor to work alongside the Benthic Terror. Hey, friends, we now swim as a school. All right. There he is. Good. Now you'll have to do this voice forever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we are safe for the trenches. But if you run out into no man's land, you'll be open to sniper fire. Just keep moving and you should outrun them, though. No Man's Land, uh, that's my home in Calgary. <laughs> my dad would use a sniper rifle on us. You know, I am surprised that I don't know a wrestler that's called their hometown No Man's Land. I know, right? We've had Parts Unknown. Parts Unknown. Forever. What other weird ones have, have we had? Oh, God. No, Parts Unknown. Uh, Dudleyville. Um, from the outer reaches of your mind, I think oh, that is one. one. That is one. Yeah, you may as well. Yeah. So, I will say about tough enough the um, the one that the the one that I feel like was not the worst, but not the worst ending. But how I'm like, I don't know how anyone was made from this at all. Do you the, the Stone Cold one, if you remember correctly. Do you, how well do you remember that one? Which, the Stone Cold one? Yeah. Except for, like, the first two episodes and the end, I don't remember everything about Do you remember the ending at all? Yeah, the guy won. They announced it, like, in front of the crowd on Raw. And then he got slapped by Vince McMahon and then took a Stone Cold stun. And I'm watching that and I'm like... How? This is like how to kill someone dead in the water, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I, I don't even know. Uh, uh, did that guy even have a match in on TV? Because I don't remember him. I and, don't think he ever did. I don't have to know. Uh, so what do you remember from the last season of the Tough Enough? Okay. So I remember one girl quit, like, after the first day. Right. And then she got replaced with someone who probably should have been on, but didn't for some reason. Yeah, it was, uh, um, it was actually Chelsea. Yeah. <laughs> and then I remember Zeke. Who? Who was like the, the crowd favorite of the show. Oh, ZZ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And he had like little to no ring experience or knowledge at all. Mm. Uh, uh, wasn't Mandy Rose in this She was. She well? was in this. I, um, I feel like I thought, did she win? Who won this one? The Stone Cold one? Uh, not the Stone Cold one, but the latest one. Sarah Lee won for the win. And Unfortunately, she took her own life last year. I heard. I didn't know that. My friend Russ told me about because 
after I watched the season, I had some questions for him. And that was sad, too, because she got married to another wrestler who was in NXT. I don't remember his name off the top of my head. And they had, like, three kids. Oh, really? I didn't know they had any kids. Yeah. So when we, so when they announced it, it was surprising because it's like, wow, she's leaving behind three kids and, you know, a husband. And there was, like, nothing ever said. Like, n- n- nobody knows why she did it or... Oh, there was, like, no note or anything either? Not that I remember. Mm-hmm. But I think uh, you mentioned... One? You mentioned, though, that there is someone that really hated her on the show. Yeah, Jericho <laughs> hated her. It was like... Because she couldn't stop smiling. Yeah. Like, you don't belong here. I don't know why you're still here. <laughs> And then I'm trying. Who won for the men? I don't. I don't remember either. A... I just watched it. Like, the like other I day. could see him. Here, let me look it yeah, up. Yeah, look it up. Because like I could see him in you know in my mind. I just can't put you know the name together. Yeah. Because I know Patrick, who ends up becoming Velveteen Dream. See, I didn't know that until Russ told me. Right. But that's because I, you know, when Velveteen Dream was a thing, I don't think I was really watching anything at that point. Like, between, I would say between, like, 2012 or 13 till basically when AEW started existing, I didn't really follow a whole lot. So I don't think I saw where he would have been prevalent on TV. Oh, okay. I do have the cause of death for Sarah Lee. Okay. Suicide, this is from Wikipedia. Suicide by combined drug intoxication. Okay. Uh, it says it was deemed by the Bexar County, Texas coroner that Lee had died by suicide via a lethal overdose of alcohol and sleeping pills. Okay. Hmm. Um, okay, so the, so the guy, the man who won it, his name is Josh. All right, and the fact that you don't remember him, I'm going to assume he's done nothing with, certainly not WWE, but maybe even wrestling? He retired in 2017. Wasn't this show in 2016? Uh, when was this? This was 2015. Okay. And, and I remember the season as well because Hogan started out yes. one of the judges and then he had to leave because of the whole he said the n-word thing. Right. Which I kind of figured because all of a sudden one day they, one of the episodes, oh wow, Lochador is almost dead already. Oh, um, one of the, uh, hold on, what's the heel here? Heel, heel. Who the hell's heel? I know we had here it is. Uh, I remember one week, all of a sudden, The Miz was on the show in place of Hogan. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, but I think at first they said that he's just the substitute for that week, and then they just never mentioned it again. Exactly. I mean, honestly, you couldn't have picked a better replacement than someone who actually was on top of it. Yeah. Um. Now you know what that season is starting to come back because it's like they did a thing where they had to run, run across like the length of a football field with however much they weighed in a bag. Yes. And then after after they did that, they had to go run up to the top of the stadium. And and. Now, yeah, this is the season starting to come back to me now. Cena was on. Oh my god, episode, if, if I'm not mistaken, the he night, did the most of most nothing thing of maybe any appearance in Tough Enough. Well, remember, well, I don't know if you remember, but the night before, he had his nose broken into like a bajillion yeah, pieces. Yeah, well, they say that, but I was like, I don't remember that. And I don't, 
I'm telling you, I wasn't watching at this point. I stopped in like I 2012, 2013, I think. I saw that match. That nose was fucking taking one shot. Like, I've never seen a nose like that in my life. Yeah, but he came on. They had hyped him up. And I feel like in the end, he didn't do or say anything, really. He didn't do much, yeah. And Which is probably that... just a gimmick thing to like, maybe I'll oh, make. What was it? Oh, I forgot. What was this even airing on? USA Network. It was. Maybe it was just a, just a um, a ratings thing. Like, oh, Cena's back. Okay, now I'm gonna ask you a question. Sure. Because when I ask this, maybe this will have already happened. But I'll ask it anyway. Now that. Raw is going to be on Netflix. Did you see Netflix bringing Tough Enough back? I told you when we first started this, or maybe I didn't on air. I was like, I don't know why Tough Enough isn't their American Idol. Right. And you can't say it's because, well, look, none of the winners did anything. Neither did American Idol or the voice winners. A exactly. lot of times it's the runner up that does more. Like, And that the- certainly hasn't stopped those shows for all those years. Like, the only two winners of American Idol I remember, like, actually doing something is Kelly Clarkson and Gary Underwood. Those are, like, the only two. Yeah, that sounds right. Because, like you said, it's the people who didn't win that end up becoming the more famous people. Right. Because, and and we can use Tough Enough, Miz is the perfect example of that. Right. He did not win the Million Dollar Tough Enough. And he's been on TV for close to 20 years. Yeah. And then, if I think by default, if you have to pick the most successful winner of Tough Enough, again, it's by default, it's John Morrison. Okay, that's, I think that might be fair, yeah. Who do you think is... Well, I was going to say who's the least successful, but I think arguments can be made for, like, two or three people. Um... Hmm. I know Daniel Pewter comes right into my head. Okay. He just yeah, but, but here's the thing. You, we remember Daniel Pewter from... Ring of Honor. Well, not even that, but we remember his thing with Kurt Angle. We remember. Right. I right. remember the Royal Rumble stuff. At least yeah. he got on a pay per view. He did. He so did. So, like, right. Andy and uh, whoever the, cur- the the final winner was, I don't think did. Like, okay, and then. Alright, you know what? Let me pull up the winners. I'm, I'm going to pull it right. back. Now that I've seen all the seasons again. Yeah. So, we can, we can determine. Like on a, I guess on a rate of how successful they were. <laughs> I guess. Okay. So season one is Maven and Idiot. Right. I mean, they, they, uh, both of them were on for pretty solid amounts of time. They were on pay per views. They were on pay per views. Everyone remembers Maven's Royal Rumble thing. Mm hmm. And Nidia doing the whole, like, girlfriend of Jamie Noble. So I, I'd say they were successful, but they weren't the most successful. They were, yeah, they weren't long term. Although with Maven now having his own YouTube channel talking about, you know, his wrestling career, that, that may be, I haven't watched it, but that may be something to keep an eye on. You know, like if we have this conversation in like two years. Yeah. All right. So season two, uh, Linda Miles and Jackie Gata. I mean, look, we talked about it on the previous episode. I don't think Jackie Gator should have even won. Right. Uh, and then um, Linda had a decent run, but I don't know how long it was. Yeah, because she was like the man. She was like the the manager of the bash. Right, and with like some dominatrix stuff. Yeah. Let me. How long was that? Let me look. How long that was. For. That was from June of 03 to 
early 04. Okay. And then she was sent to OVW in the in that year and was released November 12th, 2004. All right. Currently, she works as a college basketball referee. Where? Where does it say? Well, I would. I mean, college basketball probably could be. It's pretty much NCAA, I would think. So. Yeah, it doesn't say a school or a location. No, or a conference. <laughs> no. Um. Hmm. Okay, Jackie had some TV time. She had a WrestleMania match. Did she? Yes. It was her and Stacy Keebler against Tori Wilson and Sable. Oh, okay. In a match that I remember actually was not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't. Which WrestleMania was this? WrestleMania 20. Really? And I was there. All right. I didn't remember it. Whatever. Yeah. All right. Um. Oh. I, I, for now, I, I'd say Linda's at the bottom as far as the winners, but I think she'll move up eventually okay. as we go through this list. Jackie, I think, is barely ahead of her. Okay, season three, uh, John Hennigan and Matt Capitelli. Okay, we, we, we've talked about both of them. Yeah. John is at the top for right now. Right, I agree. Matt, I'm gonna put in the middle. Yeah, because I don't remember what he did other than the Bob Holly stuff. Well, okay, from what I remember, like, he was in OVW, he was getting trained, and they were just about to call him up when he got the cancer diagnosis. Oh, okay. And at the time, he did beat cancer, but the cancer came back, and he passed away in 2018. Mm -hmm. So my thing is, I'm just, for me, you don't have to do it, but for me, yeah, I would put him in the middle, because he's kind of like the what if. Right, like, okay. What what if he had made it WWE? Like, what? Sure. Could, you know, so. All right. So then, uh, Million Dollar was Daniel Pewter. <sighs> you brought up a good point with, like, the member of, you know, the memorable things like Angle and the Royal Rumble. Right. Oh, gosh. I think based on that, I think he is like behind ne Morrison, Maven, and Nidia. I I put him at number four. Okay. Right now, that that's just me. I, I do want to mention something with with Pewter though, in that um, I feel like that was a turning him, his thing with Bob Holly. I feel like it was a turning point with Tough Enough. And what I mean by that, by watching it, is like, okay, you, you know, they would go and they would get, you know, have the coaches be hard on all the, um, you know, hard on all the, the tough enough contestants, you know, with training, right. you know, running and all that. That's perfectly normal. But when, how do I say this? When the Bob Holly... No, sorry. No, I, I meant this for for Capitelli. Yeah. Sorry, I meant. Yeah. But when B Bob Holly thing happened, I feel like whoever was in charge of the show shifted gears to have wrestlers be more mean to the contestants mm -hmm. than more like you know more than say you know like like. Yeah, we, we got to do this because you're, um, because you're, um, because you're new here and you, we need to make sure that you're healthy enough to endure this kind of lifestyle. Right. Because then when you go to Million Dollar Tough Enough, I mean, they were doing things like, 
the big show has to smack you in the chest. I'm like, that's, what does that help? And you have, I, I, didn't they also do like a, like try to body slam him as well? Uh, I do remember, I don't, I, I guess it was big, I feel like it wasn't the big show for some reason, but maybe it is. I don't know. Um, but do you, you know what I'm saying? Like, it all of a sudden yeah. became, let's be mean-spirited yes. to the contestants. I know, I know exactly what you mean. As opposed to, yeah, we're actually doing, they, they need to get this stuff right. Yeah, we're going, it's like, like the, I would say the first two, maybe two and a half seasons is like, oh, we're going to just, you know, help you along. Yeah. You no. Know? And then after the Holly incident, it's like, Okay, we're just gonna beat you guys up. Right, and then because the, because then it's shown up through Peter too, and yeah, it's just weird to me. I guess I guess thinking back to that time period, they probably were thinking, look how much they have the how much the Bob Holly Matt Capitelli thing is being talked about. Let's do more of that. Right. That's a good point. By the right. way, look at this. By the way, I figured out this is how I can use our manager. He has his own okay. thing here. I'm gonna try it and see what what it does. Right. It it there, oh my god! Oh. buff. There he is. Ten height. Okay. All right. So to continue on. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, then season five is Andy. I'm leaning towards him being the, the worst one. Yeah, I, I was thinking the same thing. Mostly because of the ending. Mm hmm. I, I agree with that. Alright, and then, uh, the last season, uh, Josh and Sarah. Right, okay, I mean... See, but uh, did Josh and Sarah do anything on screen? I don't think they did. I don't think they yeah, ever... Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm gonna say... Okay, Andy's at the bottom. Okay. What did Andy even wind up doing? Like, what, what's Andy doing today? Uh, let me... Oh, I feel like we just had this discussion. We might have. We might have. I don't remember, though. Uh, okay, he retired in 2014. I don't even know what his last name is, to be honest with you. Right. Uh, let's see. He still has a Twitter account, but hasn't used it in nine years. Oh, whoa, the laser's chasing me. Oh, no. Uh, apparently, oh, I, no. I think I just exited. Ugh, all right, whatever. I'm gonna explore right. while we continue to talk about something. All right. Else. Okay. I okay. So I would put Sarah Lee above Andy. Andy. Mm -hmm. And then I would put Joshua ahead of the two of them, and that would probably be my guess. Yeah, you know, let's visit this Sergeant Slaughter statue. Oh. Worship me, you maggots. <laughs> Wait, why is there an empty ring? I mean, it's not even a statue of him. Where is it? Okay, it doesn't even say what Andy's doing. Okay. Maybe he just went... What is the, um, the term when, like, you go up to the mountains and... Stay away from everyone. Oh. Like you've reached the pinnacle? I don't know. No, that's not it. The oh, there he is. There's the statue. 
What is this? It looks like a graduation ceremony stage. Did you, did you control the, the, the statue? I don't know. Can you imagine if that's what it is? The big, you can control a big giant Sergeant Slaughter statue. Oh, I, okay. I think I know what you mean. Uh, the saying, he went out on top. Is that what you're no, thinking? No, because he didn't go out on top. Hmm. I don't know. Whatever. Don't know. Yeah. What about judges? Do you have any, like, judges that stand out that you liked or hated? Okay. I I think it's almost a general consensus. Everyone liked Al Snow. Yeah. That's, like, a general consensus there. Right. Um... I thought Taz was good for the time that he was there. Right. He's kind of a forgettable judge. Or, not judge, but... Excuse me. Um, I know Jacqueline was there. Uh, let me... Let me look up. Like, at first I kind of liked Bill DeMott, but then when you heard more about... But well, when you heard more about of like what he did, mm -hmm. you know, like I, I kind of lost respect for him. Sure, I don't know if I know what. When was this out for Bill Demont? Oh was... gosh, it's like six years ago, maybe. See, I don't know stuff. That would have been 2018, 2017. I don't know anything about that, so I'm not exactly sure. Uh, let me... Okay, here we go. I, I, all right. So this is from the. Uh... I do know that they had Bill Demont cried one episode. I think, if I remember correctly. Yeah. All right. So here, so this is on his Wikipedia. Okay. So Demont resigned on March 6, 2015, following multiple online wrestling news reports of accusations of misconduct and abuse by a dozen plus. I did know trainees. this. Okay. Yes, I do remember this now. So here's some of the stuff that he was, you know, alleged to have done. Mm -hmm. It includes accusing DeMott of making trainees perform dangerous drills, physically assaulting and bullying trainees, using homophobic and racial slurs amongst other derogatory terms, letting trainees train while naked, and condoning sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. These allegations were made by, uh, let's see. Yeah, this is the part I might not know. Who were they made by? Kevin Matthews, who... Oh, I know hey, Kevin Matthews. He's a, um, okay. or he was a local New Jersey indie wrestler. Mike Bucci, better known as Nova. I was going to say, it's Simon not Nova. Dean. Yeah, and Simon Dean. Eva Lise. She was in uh, Lucha tough. Underground, I think. Well, yeah, and she was a tough enough person. Right. And Devin Nicholson, who is known as Hannibal. That I don't, I don't know if I know that person. Uh, then in 2013 by Chad Baxter and Chase Donovan. I don't know those two. I don't. Who's that? I don't know either one of them. Oh. Kurt Hawkins in 2014. That's Brian Myers. Right, okay. As well as several wrestlers, including Judas Devlin. I don't know that one. Who's better known as Luchasaurus. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. Riley Pierce, who is Ryan Nemeth, uh, Dolph's younger brother. Brandon Traven, Derek Bateman. Derek Bateman That's sounds familiar. He's EC3. Oh, that's fine. Uh, Tara Calloway. And is that The Undertaker is the late relative? I don't think. I don't know. And, and I've, I've never heard this person. Kenny Omega. Oh, God. Really? Wow. So, Devlin and Travis stated that they had submitted complaints to management about the mod in March 2013 when still WWE employed. They publicized their complaints in 2015. 
WWE released statements regarding some of the claims that come to light in 2013 and 15, stating it had investigated the matter and had found no wrongdoing. Pierce questioned the thoroughness of the investigation, saying WWE did not question him despite Pierce being one of the alleged victims. The allegations caused a strongly negative reaction on social media in March 2015, with the hashtag FireDemot trending on Twitter. He publicly denied the allegations on March the 6th, but also announced his reg re resignation to, quote, avoid any embarrassment or damage to the company. What was, before we check out the scene, what was he doing? Was he an active wrestler at that time, or was he just like a backstage person, or? No, he was just a trainer. Okay, gotcha. One of the things that I remember hearing, and it wasn't on this here on Wikipedia, is when Rusev was in training. And again, I don't know if this is true or not. He, like, did something to his neck, and he had to wear, like, a neck brace or a cast, and Demott grabbed him by the, the cast, mm. the neck brace, and he, like, pulled him around with it. Mm. So. All right. All right, here we go. What is this right. door? Uh, I'm going to, I'll be the, what is, <laughs> no, what is, what is the name, what's, what is, oh, Simon it's, Says. I, yeah. Oh, my God, that is what it is. Look, Simon is. Simon is. I should just say, er, 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 er. All right. Please enter the password. Why are you guys looking at me? This Isn't this stuff sort of your thing? Yeah. Aren't you, you know, a hitman or something? Well, if we didn't think it was Brett yet, there it is. There it is, <laughs> yep. <laughs> what? Are you kidding me? I'm a pro wrestler, <laughs> not an assassin. Oh man, my world is rocked right now. That still doesn't help with the password. We need a hint. Hint granted. Please enter the password. Uh, oh, it is Simon Says. That's what we're doing. All right, blue, red, green. Oh, what? Blue wasn't first? Maybe it's green, blue, red, green. Hold on. Do it again. All right, yellow. Yellow, blue, blue green. Yellow, no, just yellow, blue, green. Yellow, okay. blue, green. Access granted. All right, we're in. <laughs> All right. In the, I was, I should have, I was going to say the easiest Simon Says game ever, but I actually lost that itself. Wow. The first time <laughs> What are we doing over here? Why is this a thing? I don't see his itty ditty bitty bag or itty no. bitty ditty whatever it is. Also, the um, the ex the exclamation points down. So, I have a feeling this was just the dead end. Hype up, hype up. You think I would have learned my lesson from that thing that backfired on me? Yeah, but right. I guess not. Okay, so I guess we're good. heading out here again. Where the hell do they want me to go? No, no, no. Get away from me. No, stop following me. Get get in the trenches. Oh yeah, I should get in the trench. How come I can't get into in here? No, no, no. How? I guess this way? Ugh. I'm just looking for a bag called an itty ditty Bitty bag. Bitty bag. Come on, leave me alone. Leave me alone. Did that help? I couldn't tell. AP up, great. Stop shooting me. The laser is very distracting for me to yeah, figure I this out. See. Stop. Oh, it stopped. Good, as it should. All right, now I can sit back. Ugh. Yeah, go in, go in the trend. Oh, wait, go this way. No. Uh, yeah. No, I can't. It doesn't let me. What? I don't know where the hell I'm supposed to go. I mean, it's almost a video anyway, so I could probably 
figure this out next time, but... Yeah. Alright, let's let's finish up Tough Enough 12. Oh, oh my okay. god, I'm almost dead because I got hit twice. Look at this. Alright, so... Okay, so we've agreed Andy was the worst winner. Yes. Of Tough Enough. I believe so, yes. And then... Would we say John? Yeah, I'm moving towards. I'm moving towards John. I think that's a yeah. point, very, very fair. I, I, in, I in terms of in terms of success and longevity. Yeah. All right. Then you gotta go this way for some reason. Oh, this is right. Uh, Here we go. Yep. There we go. Yeah, I'd like. I'd like to hear what our listeners. Oops today is their best and worst winner. Yeah, leave a like and give a comment on who you think the best or worst best and worst tough enough winner was. Mm -hmm. Alright, let's try to do a little bit more here. and then Oh, more Simon Says! Give me a hint. Okay, that's easy enough. Blue, blue, green, green. I could use some help. That voice is a little. Well, what's the Simon says? I know, but it didn't. I remember when I played <laughs> that, it didn't sound like that. Yeah, well, burr, 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 burr. Mm -hmm. oh, this place is a maze. It's like a tangled nest of trenches, bunkers, and snipers. What kind of bird makes a nest out of trenches and snipers? Interesting. This bunker at the eastern end of the complex is the most heavily guarded one. So what's he saying that it's here? The itty bitty whatever bag is here? Right. <laughs> I don't know what they're, they're telling me to go with that tent all the way to the right. If I were going to store a stolen wrestling artifact, this is where I'd put it. It's got to be under there. I guess we know where to go next, eh? But how? On your way through the battle maze to the bunker on the east. So there we go. I have a feeling it's probably down up. Oh, more Simon says, more Simon says. Blue, yellow, green. All right, blue, yellow, green, right? Mm -hmm. Blue, yellow, green. <laughs> now, did someone, did he say someone stole this from him or? That's kind of what I interpreted. I think this is it right here, so just to be sure. Because I know how things work here, and it wouldn't surprise me if there's a battle here. Right. I'm gonna stag. I don't want to use everything in case I'm wrong. Alright, it's up here to the right. Avoid the enemy. Oh, um, uh, you're gonna have to, I'm gonna have to fight one of them. And I think it's gonna be the top one. I think it's here. You know, I was trying the other day. Yes. Speed of reality wrestling related shows mm -hmm. to watch um, wrestlers on Netflix because I had seen the first two episodes. Wrestler? I don't think I know that. What is that? I mean, obviously it's about wrestlers, I guess. Okay, so what it is, or the story, is Al Snow is in charge of the Ohio Valley Wrestling. He bought the company. Okay. And the mayor of Louisville, Kentucky, and this sports radio personnel 
buy into OVW. Okay. And they try to help make it, you know, different. So they've set up a summer tour. And if the summer tour works, then the company is going to be, you know, very fun. If it fails, then the company's in trouble. Okay. But you never said it's closed or and like it'll close. It's just, you know, it'll be in trouble. Right. Um. So and like you get to meet like the people that work in OVW, like besides the wrestlers. Well, like um, production people. Yeah, production people. Uh, the announcers for the weekly shows. It's like a seven episode season. I've watched the first two. How long is the episodes? About 50 minutes. Okay. It's a solid length for an episode. Because, like, the breakout star from that show, because, like, I haven't, fi- like I said, I haven't finished it, but I know, is this female wrestler. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> Hold on, let me do this again. Okay. This is it. It's not here. Hmm. Well, I have to gather some information. I bet that sniper could tell us more. Maybe you can shoot a question at her. Negative. I do have a plan, though. But we need to get into position. Question the sniper. So who's so anyways, the well-known like, woman or whatever? Okay, so the ba- like the one who came out, like the big star, her name is Hollywood Haley J. Okay. And she's a second generation wrestler. And her mom works in OVW as well. And, and she's like in her early 20s. Okay. And like she got into wrestling basically to stay out. Oh, what is stay going out on? What is he doing? Oh. You. Someone should teach you how to shoot. Gah. How did you get up here? First tip, it helps when you can see. Let's make this quick. Tell us where the itty bitty ditty bag is, and we'll let you go. It's been kept in the, the stunk, the sunken state. It's a top secret deep cover special edition military installation playset. You'll never get through it. We've come this far. Too far to turn back now. How do we get to the sunken state? There's an entrance just up ahead if you're that determined to die. <laughs> military bases do not scare me, Sir PNK. I faced opponents three times my size jumped from high dives into the ring, and been thrown through fish tanks and more. Suit yourself. Good luck getting past the automated defenses. They'll turn you into molten plastic in a heartbeat. Also, you'll need you'll also need to activate a three-part entry system to unlock the bunker the bag is kept in. Just remember you have to keep playing Simon Says. So is Lochasaur or Lochador like Mick Foley here? I don't know. I'm still I'm still kind of on the uh, on the on the thinking yeah. bubble of who he's supposed to be. All right, go ahead. Oh. Come on, amigos! Wrestling history away. I mean, if he says have a have a good day, then we know. Right. <laughs> Come on, it can't be that bad, right? I almost feel it probably is like another Canadian somehow. Yeah. But yeah, like, Haley J's, like, in her early 20s that she got into the wrestling because, like, it kept her out of trouble, like, legal trouble, like, drugs oh, okay. and stuff, so. Alright, I think this is a great time to stop before we go and retrieve the, um, the itty bitty bag from Red Dice Hill, apparently. Alright, Bill, right. why don't you tell people where they can find you and we'll head out of here. Alright, uh, if you're still on Twitter, you can follow me there at House of Bill. And Instagram, Mr. Billiam85. And as for me, official RP Jimmy on YouTube and Twitch. 
and we'll catch you next time for some more Wrestle Quest.